close range striking with a cane. We're talking about bar strikes, bayonet strikes, and clinching. These are all very important. Well, I hate it. It happens, but I, I hate it. You know, one, one blow not strong enough, and there you go. The, the other guy runs to you. He's faster, he's younger, you lose your balance. Or uh, multiple opponents, like here. I got a knife in my, in my right hand. I remember back when I was training Muay Thai in the 90s and the UFC came out. Everybody was jumping on the uh, BJJ bandwagon and many people who were not even trained in BJJ but maybe were judo black belts all of a sudden became BJJ experts. Well, there's a few people that know how to throw you around with a, with a cane. But I'm not a grappler and I uh, like to take my distances as soon as possible. I grappled a little back then because I could see the value in it. I love striking. So that's the art I stuck to. Pugilism. But I understood that I don't get to dictate the range I have to fight in. So I trained in a little bit of grappling, enough for me to find position and maybe get to my feet against an untrained person. I had no illusions that I could grapple a good grappler. I just wanted enough grappling skills to help me if I needed to in a fight outside of the dojo. With a cane, as with any other weapon, you want to get into your comfort zone as fast as you can. Moving forwards and backwards and clinching makes part of the whole uh, training. Now don't forget, your target, close range, can do a lot of damage to you, but so can you, don't forget that. At this gateway period to the modern era of fighting, there is a lot of bullshit. If you study any of the modern studies on violence, we know that the clinch is the most important environment to train nowadays. This idea that 90% of fights end up in a wrestling match on the ground simply isn't true. This is something that came from an LA police study on violence and arrest tactics where any time that you put somebody up against a wall or against a car was considered grappling. This is not ground fighting, this is grappling. This man here is a Belgian policeman and does this every Sunday afternoon. Dealing with drunken and aggressive hooligans, you know, a few slaps in the face, take him down on the ground, handcuff, take him to the police station, and there it is. And ground fighting doesn't always mean a jiu-jitsu tournament. It can also look like this. The most important environment to be able to grapple in is on your feet in the clinch. This has been proven over and over again in studies on violence. This was not what we were told in the 90s. Also, back in the day, I remember so many people telling me that their pugilistic fighting skills is so great that no one could take them to the ground. And you watched over and over, someone who knew how to close distance was able to take many expert fighters to the ground over and over again just by being able to close distance and get to the clinch. A good bayonet strike has to be delivered with speed speed and power. It takes a lot of training, it takes a lot of repetitions and drills, but it's a very good technique. Clinch may be the most important environment to train for. And when it comes to the use of a weapon like the cane, we also need to be able to close distance and fight. This is why bayonet striking, bar striking, or what I would call a cross check, are so important to add into your 
distant strikes. A bayonet strike has to be delivered with speed and accuracy. Can it happen that they grab my cane? Oh yeah, that can happen. Do those drills like we do here, not too fast. Just get used to the fact of somebody grabbing your cane and don't start to fight over the cane. Think about attacking your target. That's the most important thing. You may think that you could keep someone at bay with your cane and you may even be able to do that if the fight starts at long range but very little violence starts in that range. You need to be able to use your cane in close range. If you can't use your walking stick nose to nose, your walking stick is probably useless in a real violent situation. Indeed, Master Joel. Train scenarios like this, you know, the, 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 the block is done too slow, uh, you've been surprised and the attacker grabs your throat and pushes you you know do this slowly or it may be a little faster if you work with uh, protections but just make sure to do this over and over and over and once again the key word is training you need to be able to fight at close range break away and be able to use your long range strikes or be able to use your long range strikes at long range but be prepared you may not stop someone and they will close distance fighting needs adaptability whether it's empty hand fighting or fighting with a tool oh i totally agree and don't forget an attack doesn't always happens from the front make sure you have a few good breakaway techniques and train those over and over again. So, if you are a cane fighter, you need to be able to fight long range, close range, and medium range. This is a fact. Now I'm working with Keith here, doing some partner drills, and I want you to see one thing, this is very important. In any kind of fighting, you need to be adaptable. Even if it means letting go of the weapon that you think gives you power. Thank you.